Welcome back to Words of Paradise. I'm your host, Leon Idol. And Star Wars just can't catch a break, whether it be awful show after awful show, such as Book of Boba Fett and Kenobi, getting backlash for racism, for things like uh, whitewashing in The Bad Batch Part 2, which Disney caved and bent the knee to, all their activism, obviously the sequel trilogy. I mean, every good Star Wars project is preceded and followed by just heaps of trash and now they're working on ruining original source material as well at least if this article is to be believed lucasfilm was changing revenge of the sith for the worst now revenge of the sith one of the best movies in the franchise i mean just bar none the original trilogy is amazing but frankly this is probably in my top three of all star wars movies so let's see what this article has to say and see what dumb change disney is inevitably going to do to revenge of the sith Lucasfilm risks making one of Star Wars' most dramatic storylines from Revenge of the Sith less impressive if they keep revealing Jedi that survived. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've had that, you know, thought process for a long time. The whole idea that so many Jedi seem to have survived Order 66, it's getting pretty old. You know, Reva, as a child, somehow survived Darth Vader. We had other Jedi appear in Obi-Wan Kenobi. We have it in Rebels with, you know, I, I didn't mind Canon Jarrus, uh, or Kanan, uh, Canon, you know, getting away. And as much as I love Jedi Fallen Order, you know, th that really should have been it. Cal Kestis and Canon Jarrus, and that, that, that should have been it. The more you have Jedi survive 66, the less impactful all that is. I completely agree with this. So let's see what they have to say. Lucasfilm risks making Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith's most stunning twist, less impactful if it keeps revealing Jedi that survived Order 66. The Star Wars prequel trilogy detailed the life and tragedy of Anakin Skywalker as he was seduced to the dark side by possessive love and manipulations of Emperor Palpatine. One of the most dramatic moments in the entirety of the Star Wars timeline took place in Revenge of the Sith, as Order 66 was enacted and the once Republic loyal clones forcibly turned on the Jedi and slaughtered them in spades, and the Empire took control of the galaxy. Star Wars audiences were led to believe that Jedi were all but extinct after the events of Revenge of the Sith and Order 66. After all, the original Star Wars trilogy implied as much. Yeah, exactly. You're also, I, I didn't even cover that, you are muddying up the original trilogy the more you have Jedi live and the more you have Jedi live and be in secret. I love Ahsoka. She is top five, maybe top three favorite Star Wars characters for me. But by throwing her into Mandalorian and by throwing her into her own show and, and even having her in Rebels, like... It just, it, it cheapens certain things. I love Ahsoka. I don't know that Ahsoka should have lived. It's a very tight rope to walk as someone who's a fan of the character, but also just wants good writing and storytelling. Introducing viewers only to Obi-Wan Kenobi, Yoda, and the fate they placed in Luke Skywalker as the savior of the galaxy. However, in nearly two decades, Star Wars storytelling since the original release of Vin Revenge of the Sith, Lucasfilm has introduced numerous Jedi that survived the genocide of their order. Some of these Jedi have even had incredibly close ties to Anakin himself, like Ahsoka Tano, exactly, who was revealed to be Anakin's Padawan in Star Wars The Clone Wars. Too many Jedi survive survived Order 66. Ahsoka Tano is far from the only former Jedi to have survived Order 66. Star Wars Rebels introduced Kanan Jarrus, formerly known as Caleb Dune, Doom, Obi-Wan Kenobi revealed Reva, a Jedi initiate who survived Order 66 at the Jedi Temple, who literally had a run-in with Darth Vader, and somehow she miraculously survived. The Mandalorian features Grogu, another survivor of Anakin's Purge. Even Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order introduced a few survivors of Order 66, most prominently Sarah Junda and Cal Kestis. Other Jedi are known to have survived too. The Wookiee Gungi will return in Season 2 of Star Wars The Bad Batch, and plenty of other remaining Jedi were turned into Vader's Inquisitors after the fall of the Republic. Yeah, it, it, it's too much. It truly is. It it makes what Obi-Wan... First of all, it makes Obi-Wan look like an idiot. If you go back and watch A New Hope, and he talks about the fall of the Jedi, and it's kind of this mysterious thing that we don't get a whole lot of information on, then you watch all this new supplemental material, and you're like, Yo, Kenobi... You're kind of an idiot. Not only that, but when you watch the Kenobi series, he has interactions with other Jedi, so he knows there are more survivors. I mean, there's the one he lets die within the first episode or two, so he clearly knows more are out there. I mean, it, it just, it really does impact Star Wars at the original A New Hope when you go back. 
At this point, an argument could be made that too many Jedi survived Order 66. The shock of Palpatine's Order 66 came from the fact that an entire religion and culture was wiped out in a few minutes, hours, and days. The Jedi didn't survive, the bad guys won, and the light was snuffed out of the galaxy. Revealing that while many Jedi did die, quite a few still survived, risks dampening the effect of Order 66 dramatic storytelling twist. The more Jedi survived, the less effective Palpatine's entire plan appears to be until it becomes clear that there was still plenty of hope left in the galaxy after all. Not only that, but with so many Jedi having survived, you would think... Now, now, Cal Kestis, I will give a pass to. The, the game very much goes out of its way to show that while he survived, he spent years just laying low and not using the Force to the point to where he was kind of crappy at it. That's what makes his character growth in the game so great, is you're effectively a young adult Padawan who, you know, probably had the Force skills of a 9 to 12-year-old. Like, it made for interesting character growth that also fed into a gameplay mechanic of learning new skills. Like, when you're able to tie story and gameplay together in such a unique marriage that feels believable, that it's, it should be should be rewarded, and it was rewarded. I'll give Cal Kestis a pass. I haven't decided on if I should even give Ahsoka a pass, even though I like her more than Cal Kestis. And Kanan, um, I mean, I, it, it works. I can, I can believe it, considering, you know, how he escaped. But even then, was it necessary? No, probably not. I don't think any of these are necessary, even Cal, who I think is the best of a bad situation. So, yeah... The Jedi appear to have been organized during the Dark Times. Though on the surface, a few dozen Jedi surviving out of an order that consisted of approximately 10,000 members may seem like a drop in the ocean, the entire point of Palpatine's master plan was to snuff out any semblance of hope in the galaxy. Anywhere a Jedi goes, hope is something that follows. Kanan Jarrus and his ghost crew friends became an integral unit of the Rebellion, and he trained a new Jedi. Cal Kestis and Sarah Junda ensured the force, future Force-sensitive children wouldn't be so easily located by the Emperor. By the Empire, sorry. They were working in the shadows, undermining the Empire whenever they could, even becoming organized. Hey, post-editing Leon here. Uh, it just occurred to me while I was editing, I was pronouncing Ciri's name wrong this whole time. I'm not an idiot or a noob. I have played Fallen Order. Actually, I think it might be the very first PS4 game I ever platinumed. I loved the game. I know it's Siri. For whatever reason, it just wasn't clicking when I was reading the article. So, just wanted to throw that out there for anyone that is watching this and thinks, Oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Doesn't he know the character name right? I know it's Siri. I just don't know why I was thinking what I was. Anyway, back to the video. Sorry about that. So organized, in fact, that the most recent trailer for Fallen Order sequel, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, features a scene that looks as though Cal and Sarah were able to gather enough resources to create a new Jedi archive of some kind. Ugh, why? I haven't seen the new trailer to, fa to Fallen Order, or I guess Jedi Survivor. I didn't know this was a thing. Now I'm worried, because I was really looking forward to this game, but if it's just gonna crap all over the source material because they want a cool game, that's, that's not good enough for me. I'm already getting tired of Jedi as it is. I'm, I'm getting tired of Star Wars as it is. This just doesn't look good. It doesn't sound good. I'm going to go watch the trailer uh, after this is over. Hopefully, maybe the game itself still looks impressive enough, but this alone makes me skeptical. If enough Jedi were able to regroup, such as an extent that they were able to reconnect with each other, as Ahsoka, Kanan, and Ezra Bridger did in Star Wars Rebels, and other Jedi like Sarah and Cal were able to set up a proper base of operations, how much of the light did Order 66 snuff out in the galaxy? Lucasfilm's Jedi survivors risk changing Revenge of the Sith for the worse. As there are relatively quite a few Jedi left in the galaxy, Order 66 effect effectiveness must be questioned. In return, Revenge of the Sith's narratively triumphant climax is affected as well. Though the Star Wars prequels dealt mostly with Anakin Skywalker's turning to the dark side, the monumental shift in the galaxy that led to dark times under the Empire's reign was also an important part of the overarching story. You know what? To, to take a brief pause from this, it reminds me of Dragon Ball Z. In Dragon Ball Z, Frieza just wipes out the Saiyans, obliterates them. Who do we have as survivors? We have Goku, Vegeta, Raditz, and Nappa. Well, Raditz gets dealt with right out the gate. Nappa, not too long after, it literally leaves only Goku and Vegeta. They are the extent of the survivors of the Saiyan race. An entire race of beings snuffed out by one powerful emperor. What does that remind you of? I'll give you one guess. Then, way down the line, we eventually get two more. We get Broly and Paragus. Well, Paragus dies in the same movie he's introduced, and then Broly, 
Okay, so we have a third Saiyan. It took like 30 plus years, but we finally have a third Saiyan. Still a male, so it's not like they can even, you know, repopulate their, uh, you know, their, their species, their people. So we have a third long lost surviving Saiyan. I'm fine with that. That's how you do a universe, a race wiped out, and then maybe there's a survivor here or there. If we count Broly and Paragus before anyone dies, six Saiyans, six made it off of planet Vegeta. That is, that's great. That's how you write a story of a snuffed out uh, group of people. There is no, oh, and now we've added Sans here, or now we've added Sans there. I mean, yeah, they added Sans in the, you know, non-canon movies like Turles, but they're non-canon, they don't count. And yeah, they added Sans like uh, Khalifla and Kale, but those are alternate universe Sans. They're not from the universe where their planet was wiped out. So again, they're not the Sans we, we know and love. St I can't believe I'm saying this. Star Wars needs to take notes from Dragon Ball. Take notes from Akira Toriyama. They need to connect the galaxy as seen in the prequel trilogy with galaxy known from the original Star Wars trilogy. And the Order 66 scenes in Revenge of the Sith acted as a bridge between the two eras. Anything that undermines that narrative bridge, such as too many Jedi surviving Order 66, undermines the story of Revenge of the Sith as a whole, and even risks undermining the original Star Wars trilogy. Yeah, I said that earlier. It undermines A New Hope, absolutely. In fact... The, uh, the Book of Boba Fett episode that has Ahsoka meeting Luke, while as, as, you know, fans that just love, you know, fan service moments, wow, that's really great. Narratively, it does have implications. It kind of makes you wonder, uh, I mean, all right, where was Ahsoka, you know, during the, the you know, Battle of Endor or, or during the entire time the Rebels were fighting against the, the Empire? Don't you think that, and I'm sure these questions will be answered in the Ahsoka show, but I don't know if any explanation they can give us is going to justify her almost letting the Empire win on multiple occasions when she could have been there with Luke, one of the, after Yoda and Obi-Wan's fall, the last of the Jedi, or at least who we thought was the last of the Jedi. Now it turns out there's plenty of others running around. Like, it, it just, it does hurt what was otherwise an originally perfect trilogy. Where were all these Jedi during the fight against the Empire in A New Hope? The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Lucasfilm has painted themselves into a corner where it can only kill off more beloved characters to keep canon intact or invent convoluted reasons for why they may not have been involved in the war. Exactly. I mean, that's literally what I, I just detailed. Screen Rant is normally kind of a crap outlet. I uh, can't normally say I agree with many of their takes, but this? No. Good writing. I will give you credit, Screen Rant. Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, contains some of Star Wars' most defining history, and the story deserves to remain intact. Yep, I couldn't agree more. Uh, I've been very upset at the state of Star Wars for quite a long time now. Um, you know, I, I did really like uh, The Force Awakens, I liked Rogue One, and then everything after that was... I, I, I couldn't get behind it. I wanted to. I wanted to love it so bad. I was an apologist for both Rise of Skywalker and... Uh, the Last Jedi for at least a month after seeing each of them because I just couldn't believe Star Wars would hurt me and disappoint me like this. But now I'm done. I'm over it. There's no more apologizing. Modern Star Wars sucks. It's trash. We get a good thing here and there, like the last few episodes of Clone Wars Season 7. We get a few good things here and there, like, you know, Season 1 of Mando. And that's it. And that sucks. Star Wars Echoes was awesome. I don't think it's canon and it's an anime, uh, but it was, it was at least fun. But yeah, the, the Screen Rant is entirely correct, but that's just my point of view. Maybe you guys have a different point of view, and if so, I would love for you to tell me what yours is in the comments below. Maybe there's something I'm missing, or you can let me know on Twitter by finding me at BoltTheWord. And until then, please like and subscribe. I'm really trying to grow this channel, so your subscription would mean the world to me. You know, we can either hate on or love Disney Star Wars together. The choice is yours. But until next time, this has been Words of Paradise.